What is so special about the land of Israel? The land of Israel is not just some external object, some material possession of the nation, nor is it just some tool to achieve unity and strengthen our physical and even spiritual existence. Rather, the essence of the land of Israel is tied to the very life of the Jewish people. Consequently, it is impossible to understand the holiness of the land of Israel or our love for it through mere intellectual justification. Trying to understand the land of Israel as purely an external object that unifies the nation or as a tool to strengthen Jewish identity in exile or even as a tool to strengthen faith, fear of God and practical mitzvot is misguided. The foundations of these understandings are weak compared to the holy power of the land of Israel. Zionism isn't only about solving problems. Our goal must not only be the redemption from Egypt, being healed from a sickness, escaping poverty and blinding darkness. We must not yearn to simply get rid of negativity. This impulse depresses the soul and gives no meaning to life. God did not create us for this. Rather, we must yearn to be full of greatness, with joy in our souls, full of renewed life that shines light in every direction we turn. Toward you, only toward God, it is your greatness we seek, hope for and wait. To the land of Israel we are coming, for our redemption and the redemption of our souls are we yearning. It is not about being saved from the chains of exile. No, it is something much greater than this. We are seeking light, the flow of life from the source of the Holy of Holies, looking towards the Holy Land, the Land of Life. Why did our generation merit redemption? Some people are asking, what did our generation do that they merited redemption? The answer is simple. Its merit was that it was involved in the greatest of all mitzvot, a mitzvah that is equal to the entire Torah. It was involved in redeeming the Jewish people. In fact, it was not only involved, but it is still involved and will continue being involved without a moment's rest in the redemption of the Jewish people. This divine strength is what is elevating and leading it to salvation. Preparing material needs of the Jewish people. The first generation of the coming of the Mashiach that will begin settling the land of Israel will prepare the material needs of the Jewish people. And when the material strength of the nation has been established, the inner spiritual qualities will be revealed and the Torah will return with all its powerful light. Who has the greater soul? The nefesh, or physical element of the soul, of those secular Jews who are connected with a great love to matters of the Jewish nation, to the land of Israel, and to the revival of its people, is more perfected than the nefesh of religious Jews who lack this profound concern for the Jewish people and for building up the land of Israel. On the other hand, the ruach, or spiritual element of the soul, of those who are religious and follow the Torah and mitzvot is more perfected. The solution will come only through the Mashiach, who will unify the Jewish people. The nefesh of the religious will be repaired with the help of the perfected nefesh that is found in holy secular people, in regard to matters of the nation and physicality that are understood by human intellect and emotions. On the other hand, the ruach of the secular people will be repaired through the influence of those who are religious, observant of Torah and strong in faith. As a result of all this, the great light will come upon both groups and a holistic spiritual transformation will emerge in the world. The Jewish people will then be ready for redemption. The greatest righteous people, the most profound souls, will act as a unifying pipeline through which will pass the light of a corrected nefesh from left to right and the light of the corrected ruach from right to left. Only then will there be great happiness. 
Your priests will dress in righteousness and your pious ones will sing. Psalms 132 verse 9 Betraying One's Own People Rabbi Akiva says, You should love God with all your soul, even if your soul is taken away. Our rabbis taught, Once the wicked Roman government issued a decree forbidding the Jews to study and practice the Torah. Papas ben Yehuda came and found Rabbi Akiva publicly teaching and occupying himself with Torah. He said to him, Akiva, are you not afraid of the Roman government? He replied, I will explain it to you with a metaphor. A fox was once walking alongside a river, and he saw fish going in groups from one place to another. The fox said to the fish, from what are you fleeing? The fish replied, From the traps created for us by men. The fox said to them, Would you like to come up onto the dry land so that you and I can live together in the way that my ancestors lived with your ancestors? The fish replied, Are you the one that they call the wisest of animals? You are not clever but foolish. If we are afraid in the condition in which we must live, how much more so in the environment in which we must die. So it is with us. If such is our condition when we sit and study the Torah of which it is written, for it is your life and the length of your days. Devarim 30 verse 20 If we neglect it, how much worse off we shall be. It is related that soon afterwards, Rabbi Akiva was arrested and thrown into prison. Papas ben Yehuda was also arrested and imprisoned next to him. Rabbi Akiva said to him, Papas, who brought you here? He replied, Fortunate are you, Rabbi Akiva, that you have been imprisoned for dedicating yourself to the Torah. Woe to Papas who has been imprisoned for dedicating himself to foolish things. When Rabbi Akiva was taken out for execution, it was the hour for saying the Shema. While they combed his skin with hot iron, he was accepting upon himself the kingship of heaven. His students said to him, O oh teacher, even to this extent? He said to them, All my days I have been troubled by the verse, You should love God with all your soul. Devorim 6.5 Which I interpret to mean, Even if your soul is taken away. I said, when will I have the opportunity of fulfilling this? Now that I have the opportunity, shall I not fulfill it? He prolonged the word echad, or one, until he passed away while saying it. A heavenly voice went forth and proclaimed, Fortunate are you, Akiva, that your soul has departed with the word echad. Barachot 61b Papas believed that since the Roman government had announced that their hatred of the Jewish people was only due to a spiritual disagreement, all the Jews needed to do to solve the problem was to extinguish the Jewish spiritual light. Papas reasoned, if we do that, then the Roman hatred will go away and they will eventually allow the Jews to return to their normal life. But Rabbi Akiva understood that the Roman government had merely come up with this superficial reason of spiritual disagreements to justify their hatred. In truth, they hated the essence of the Jewish people, a hatred that comes from an evil soul that says, Only me and no one else. Yeshayahu 47 verse 8 Therefore, Rabbi Akiva reasoned, if the Romans had not justified their hatred through a spiritual disagreement, they would have found other justifications. And if they could not find any other justifications, they would have simply oppressed and destroyed the Jews without reason or cause. The truth was finally exposed when the Roman government found justifications for their discrimination, even against the Jew who tried to hide his Jewish identity. When Papas was eventually imprisoned, he became angry and frustrated that he had betrayed his true self in order to win the love of the enemies of his people. Praiseworthy is the person with a pure heart and a spirit of courage 
who is willing to stand up for his people and its Torah, even when enemies try to destroy and annihilate him. Love of one's own people and of all people. I love all. I cannot but love all, all the nations. From my very depth, I want the fulfillment of all, the perfection of all. My love for Israel burns more intensely and is deeper, but my inner desire spreads out the force of its love for all. I have no need to force this feeling of love. It springs directly from the holy depth of the wisdom of the divine soul. We will never abandon our dream. Only a people who have finished what they started can exit the stage of history. But to start and not finish, that is something which is impossible. That inner urge which is so strong within us to continue Judaism in thought, action, peoplehood and land comes from a deep intuition that we still have to complete what we started. We began to say something great to ourselves and to the world, yet we have not finished. We are still standing in the middle of our speech. We have no desire to stop, nor are we able to. We refuse to abandon our way of life, our peoplehood, and the spiritual desires that transcend any narrow definition.